Most of us are familiar with Robert Louis Stevenson's famous tale entitled The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Here is the real-life story behind its origins. Stevenson's gothic novella relates the story of a mild-mannered physician called Henry Jekyll who drinks a chemical serum that transforms him into Edward Hyde, an evil and self-indulgent man who is dominated by his lowest instincts. While the book's plot was seen as an outlandish fantasy in its time, it was largely inspired by a real-life situation. Stevenson was born and grew up in Edinburgh, Scotland, and he had undoubtedly pondered the circumstances around the life of one William Brodie, who started out as a highly respected Scottish citizen of the 18th century. The idea of describing a double life may have come to Stevenson from the cabinet built by Brodie, which had stood in his childhood bedroom. Putting in many an honest day's work as a skilled cabinet maker, William Brodie was eventually made deacon of the incorporation and writes the Carpenters Trade Guild. This earned him high social standing and a seat on the Edinburgh City Council. Part of Brodie's work as a cabinet maker involved installing and repairing door locks and other security devices. His preeminence as a city councillor and high-ranking deacon also earned him the trust of many of Edinburgh's wealthy elite. After all, the well-liked Brodie moved in their social circles, meeting the likes of poet Robert Burns and painter Henry Rayburn. The gentry were quite comfortable giving him keys to their homes, so he could do his work there in their absence. Unfortunately, the popular Brodie saw this as an opportunity to finance his several vices. He would secretly take wax impressions of his affluent customers' keys and then use the mould to create his own keys. He would later quietly enter their homes by night and steal valuable belongings. As with Stevenson's characters, where Dr. Jekyll was amiable and polite, while Hyde was cruel and remorseless, Brodie also had a bizarre dual personality. He is said to have begun his break-ins around 1768, when he copied keys to a bank door and stole £800, a huge amount at the time. He used his nocturnal exploits to fund an extravagant lifestyle, which included a gambling habit, betting on cockfighting matches and playing trick dice. He also fathered five children by two mistresses who were unaware of each other. In 1786, he seemed to set up a syndicate recruiting a gang of three thieves. One, a man on the run from a seven-year sentence of transportation, another a locksmith with a grocer's shop, and the third, a shoemaker. Two years later, this was to become Brodie's downfall, when an armed raid on an excise office failed and one of the men approached the authorities to request a king's pardon. The man subsequently turned in his two henchmen, who then ratted on Brodie as a robbery's mastermind. Brodie fled to the Netherlands, but was soon arrested in Amsterdam and shipped back to Edinburgh. Two decades of his thieving ended when he was hanged before a crowd of 40,000 people. A century later, Robert Louis Stevenson became fascinated by the legendary dichotomy between Brodie's respectable facade and inner recklessness. He penned a play entitled Deacon Brodie, or The Double Life. While the play flopped, it is now regarded as a kind of prototype for Stevenson's later novella, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, portraying an increasingly out-of-control dark inner life, which contrasts with an exterior of staid respectability. The story became widely read and highly successful. It persists into popular culture and the term Jekyll and Hyde is now a common metaphor used to describe a person who is bizarrely two-faced. It's astonishing to realise that the original story of the strange case of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde was grounded in a real-life scenario.